Mike the Ref Maloney, Big Bad Boris on the call here tonight. It is perfect. Let's go! Let's go! Third. Let go! Super kick party! Yeah, pay the money for that. No one. And of course, you gotta get the coffin. <laughs> Hey, yo, 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 and away we go. Happy Saturday night to one and all. July 13th, 2024. We got AEW from Calgary, folks. This is going to be a fun night here tonight. <clears throat> it's Saturday night, and it's a good night to fight, unless you're at a Trump convention right now, apparently. But, yeah, apparently uh, somebody tried shooting Trump tonight, which I don't know how much help that's going to be, but. Yeah, uh, that's all different ball wax for a different day of year, but tonight's card, like, Jay Quick, good to see you, by the way. It, really happy to see you here. Mr. Consistency is always, always a pleasure having you here, At, just like everybody else. Always a pleasure having you all here. So, these Saturday nights are a lot of fun because, you know, it's two hours of good wrestling on a Saturday night. We're going to follow it up with a little WWE 2K24 right after. And, uh, well, before we get into the card, maybe I'll just let you know a couple changes that uh, Twitch has made that make things a little bit easier here. Um, they just released a new version of the program that I use to upload everything, OBS. Uh, now it's set up that I'm actually rendering the video from my computer rather than... Uh, re letting Twitch do all the rendering for me. So I'm looking at the lag right now between what you guys are seeing, what I'm seeing, it's about two seconds. And also if you're looking for a different resolution, it will downgrade and upgrade from my computer. I'll send five different um, amounts out. So basically what it's saying is I'm doing things to help things make things look better. So uh, we're going to see how things go here. And if it still continues to work as well as it is, we will have to, uh, keep things and just tweak things to make things look better here. So, but speaking of tweaking things and making things look better, I know, uh, looking at, uh, what we got here tonight, we got the bang, bang gang against three locals, which I know two of the three, and I'm really excited. I can talk about those coming up. Now the Rose is going to be in action to versus Tommy Billington is going to be an absolutely spectacular match. Uh, if you haven't seen Tommy Billington uh, wrestle here, he was on the Vancouver AEW uh, show, so he, he actually did a real good job on that one. So they brought him back here for the Calgary show, which is very apropos because it seems like that's where more of a home base would be in Canada for him. Uh, top Flight's going to be taking on Shade Taylor Promotions. I don't know if it's a tag or a six-way, but the graphic makes it a little weird. For a number one contenders match to face Mark Briscoe at uh, Death Before Dishonor, we got Roderick Strong and Dalton Castle. Which, give me more Dalton Castle on my screen, I'll take it. Harley Cameron versus Sky Blue, which, Sky Blue, good to see her back. And, uh, yeah, our main event for tonight, Orange Cassidy and Kyle O'Reilly taking on the Undisputed Kingdom. Tag title's not on the line, though, so... Hey, Zodiac, how you doing tonight? Wonder if they have the Athena lose the title at Death Before Sun. I would guess so. I'll be perfectly honest. Based on everything that's gone down today, like the news of uh, Natty re-signing with WWE and starting to take away a lot of the... Uh, a lot of the things going on. I honestly feel that we're probably going to get Athena as the uh, special opponent against uh, uh, Mercedes next week. Basically, they said anybody but uh, Britt Baker for this challenge. So that would be a hell of a choice. I think my country's going to implode. Other than that, ready for wrestling. Well, 
On honestly, Zodiac, this is a JFK levels of craziness, right? Somebody get that SOB that has that thank you Florida Panthers side in the third row. Get him out of there. Yes, I understand it's a tape show, but I'm still pissed off, all right? Congratulations to your Florida Panthers, Zodiac, by the way. Well, the crowd's trying to get behind him here. Well, so for those that didn't know, this filmed... I do believe they did two hours after uh, Dynamite because we are at earlier time zone for the starts. Like for for you guys on the West Coast, uh, this is starting at 8 o'clock. It started for 6 o'clock for us here in Alberta. So, so I'm wondering if Darby's going to be the third, team for a, third guy for the team AEW. I, he'd have to be. I, I would highly su be surprised if we wouldn't get uh, Darby Allen in a double cage match with a roof. Now, this will be a ton of fun here tonight as we're going along here. And so glad I could share it with all of you here. But yeah, I just hope everybody's safe because you never know what's going to happen now. Because the worst thing that could happen on something crazy that happened tonight is a copycat. And I got a feeling we're going to get a few of those coming up here. So we'll see how things go here. Um, are you guys... Quick question. I, I, I don't want to harp about this all night, but I do want to... I do want to bring it up because of the new update that came out. Are you got? Is there any stuttering in the stream at all? Is there any issues or anything that you guys are noticing? If you do see anything, let me know. Those that popped in here late, uh, Twitch did, or the program that I used to upload onto Twitch did a little update. So with with it update the way that it did, it uh. It allows me now to render right from my computer, so because I got an extra strong computer, I can set things up a little easier for you guys. So the the carryover is a lot quicker here. Or to put it in technical terms, your latency goes way down. They really said Dynamite Kid may be the biggest star in Stampede Wrestling. What about Brett? To be perfectly honest, I don't think Brett was the biggest star to come out of Stampede Wrestling, yes. But the biggest star in Stampede Wrestling, you could very well vouch for a guy like Dynamite Kid to be the biggest star. Because as much as Brett was a great wrestler... He didn't make his notoriety until he started working in the Fed. And yes, I use the term the Fed. Shoot me. By the way, good to see you, see you here tonight. Uh, see you, hear you, watch you, know you. Here, uh, Mr. Shit is with. But yeah, I... In my experience with, re with uh, Stampede Wrestling, and it's what I grew up with. If you if you're talking Stampede Wrestling, you're talking about uh, you won't shoot me. Well, good. Uh, that's why I'm very happy right now. Uh, we uh, you think about Jerry Morrow, you think of Abu Wiesel, uh you think of uh, Great Gamma. You don't. Brett and Jim, you don't necessarily think of the Night Hearts there or the Hearts of the Night Hearts there. You know they're there per se, like it's Stu's company, right? So they're going to know. But honestly, they were there. They did a great job. I'd even think more about Benoit than I would about about the Hearts in many ways, right? 
because they all grit their teeth in the ring there. And yes, I did bring up that Abe, so. Did watch Stampede Wrestling on Saturdays as often as I could get. For me, it was always a weekly thing. I don't, I don't know if I ever missed one. Like, I'll be the, even in the days of Lethal Larry Cameron, the CFL linebacker turned wrestler. My God. Takeshi just picked him up and said, no, I'm going to hold you here as long as I want to. So, yeah, Jay Quick, get back to your question here about the uh, AEW match or the Blood Guts match coming up in uh, a week and a half time here. Wow. Uh, Bucks, Okada, Perry, and Hangman. That's one team. Yeah, Briscoe, Swerve, Darby, and two more. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Wasn't always in control of the TV controller. Well, my dad was never home. My sister never cared and it, it was funny my grandmother actually lived maybe I would say 200 feet from my my house like I lived on the original homestead that we uh, moved here from the Ukraine here in uh, the early 1900s my grandmother lived in the original home and I they built another home right on the lot so if I didn't like what she was watching, I'd just go walk up there and sit with grandma and uh, we'd, we'd watch wrestling together and just talk and all, all that good stuff as your family, right? I like Shivani here having a little bit more fire here as he's commentating on this one. It's one of the big differences I find between Excalibur and Shivani. Shivani, in terms of an actual play-by-play -play caller, I don't think he would keep up technically wise. Not even close. Oh, they're not even giving us picture in picture. They're just going straight commercial. Boo. All right, it doesn't earn the full thing here, so. We thought Box would be in the cage, but we got Darby's a nut just as Boxy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at least we'll be able to use this a little bit. It very well could be the point where Moxley's just saying, I want a break. He just doesn't want to... Uh, He doesn't want to break his body down completely. Like, did you see the picture of him uh, with his daughter there? And daughter's working on springboard dives on the couch. And Moxley's just living it up there. Sometimes you just need to relax and be a father, right? Renee was like, no job, bad job. <laughs> he didn't make her gig, so I don't know if there's anything that wrong about it. Come on now. Watch, she'll be the next luchadora here to get signed to AEW. Or could you imagine she gets signed to a youth contract to WWE? So when you turn 18, you can come join us. I don't think we're going to get any more of those for a little while here. Renee was like, Claudio, get this man. Oof. What do you expect? The overprotective mother and the overexuberant father. So it works out well. Oh, just hit, hit the commercial here. So no, I'm just. And the Uncle Swiss man. Hey, you know what? There's a lot worse people that you could have for uncles there. Like I could see Brian being one. I could see Claudio being one. Wheeler, maybe not so much. Because he is more of the big bro big brother type. So. As we're coming back for commercial break here.
Then you still got Uncle Roman and Seth. Well, maybe. All depends how much they talk. They don't have... I still don't get why TSN doesn't have collision on cable. Of course, it's in Canada, so it's on there today. Yeah. You know what? It's not even worth talking about at this point. All we need... I, I got a feeling TK has that uh, WBD contract signed already. And if you didn't hear, there is a subsidiary contract already uh, already picked up by Roger Sportsnet that uh, they're going to cover a whole bunch of uh, a bunch of WBD sports uh, coming up starting in January. So, yeah, according to Tony Khan, the deal is close to be. Well, he's always going to say it's close to being done, but not quite yet. Last time I checked, Jay Quick, Cardi's are going to Cardi. And that's pretty much what we're getting in, in most respects all the time. I, I won't believe it until I actually physically see it. So, But it, if that contract gets signed, AEW is going to be moving from TSN to uh, Sportsnet, pretty much guaranteed. They're going to take the place of Raw, NXT, and, and SmackDown. Wow, really? Nope. No reversal on reversal on reversal. Hello. Tombstone piled out by Billington. Let's go. I'll just be glad when it's on max, no relation to box. Yeah, like. Right now, we're getting the pay-per-views available on Triller, which makes no difference to me because I buy them all on Triller anyway, so... And they're unlimited replays, so it's not like this package deal that they're doing is helping me out at all. And trying to navigate through the old AEW collection on TSN is just a nightmare to begin with. Love how Callus is putting Billington over. Missed the headbutt, jeez. A big props to to Keshta for being in the G one. Yeah, he's going to be gone for. Well, he'll be pretty much gone till All In. Like this might be his last match before he heads over there. But I, I do find it funny with a lot of things going If the Dynamite Collision moved to a streaming service, say, similar to Edge, it'd be rated R. I, if it gets moved to a streaming service, I think they can pretty much... They'll let everybody do whatever they want, really. Billington kicked out of the Blue Thunder Bob? Let's go. By the way, sorry, I owe you this one. A little off of my buttons tonight. Just, you know, just... Once again, if I don't stream on a Friday, you know that I'm working Friday, so... I'm actually just finished off a 32-hour shift, so... Billington could get the full full stack all that properly <laughs> the blue thunder bomb the most devastating move at all of professional wrestling only if you're Sammy Zayn I think it'll be a hybrid where it stays on TV and streams like impact yeah like I think it's gonna be a WBD max thing Straight up. There's the D. There's the three. I'm surprised they haven't used that for a rhyme yet on AEW. So. 
But you gotta admit, this is probably... The T-Trigger. Ah, Callus, welcome home. Not to catch the board you played. Yeah, well... You got everybody shoot everybody shooting Don Callis the bird except for the one guy behind saying hire me Don Callis. Oh Callis. These fans are nothing like Edmonton. Edmonton would drown them out completely. <laughs> Cows families dropping like flies. Hobbs, not to catch it, will be God. Osprey's God. I still think uh, Rusha is going to be a part of this here. Honestly, I would like to see Billington with a guy like Callus. Uh oh. So they got all this Takeshita, Fletcher, Trent. If they get Rusha, yeah, they've only had four people before. Most factions are usually only four people. And everybody just do the gradual no chance. Oh, Takeshi has a nice show you the G1. Well, I do too. I don't think you'll win it. Billington never was a bad. Oh, that's normal. Well, of course, there'll be an NJPW guy. Oh, and here comes Takesh to beat down Billington again. All right, who's coming for the save? Oh, here comes Fletcher. Pick Shingo to win. I honestly don't know who, who's all in it, so I can't. I leave stuff like that to Andre Melball's wrestling talk. Hey. Is Dax actually back? And Cash seemed to uh, withdraw all his cash to get a razor, apparently. I guess this works out now. Well, there's your two guys for Team AEW. Maybe. You can't count anything right now, Jay Quick. We got a week to go. And I don't think we're going to know exactly who's going to be that team. He recovered fast. Good to see. Yeah, like Dax's back injury, it might he might still not be a hundred percent, but knowing as stubborn as he is and the fact that it is in Calgary here, which he probably these two probably had their best AEW match ever. Here uh just last year, right? Pr 
protostar that's an interesting shirt by uh fletcher there but for an opening match for 20 minutes for a guy that let's face it he's not signed thanks for shaving cash This whole thing made sense anyway. Well, you know what? It made a little bit of sense. And I I find this all funny here. We all have to shave a little cash for today's economy. Zodiac with the jokes. Zodiac all over the jokes. I am get, I am so looking forward to the flight tomorrow just because. If you're lined up for jokes now, I want to see what happened on the podcast. So, come on, bro. <laughs> no, uh, what I was saying is, I was talking to, uh, I was on X with uh, Corey Brennan, and he was talking about when do you do the when does Tony turn on Mariah? I'm like, well, why wouldn't it be the other way around? And they're like, oh, it, I guess it could be. I'm like, the more obvious step is right here. Oh, man, now I'm going to disappoint you. Let me guess. There's no flight this week. This story with Mariah May makes so much sense. Seriously. There should be. Eh. You know what? If there is, great. If not, you know, I am so far behind in my podcast that, you know, Well, Tony had to watch for the shoe of the title. Exactly. So. The whole story about this storyline here. Is the fact that the bag bag scissor or sorry, the uh, bag bag gag here. Juice Robinson technically is not a holder of the uh, title, right? If the left one didn't get you, the right one did. Pew. Juice makes the sense. So it's absolutely. I want to see the three locals that are in this. Oh, London Lightning out of... Uh, I'm pretty sure London Lightning's out of BC. The other two are... Uh, Sean Moore and Michael uh, Richard Clark. They're both based out of Saskatchewan. But I would say more of their home wrestling promotions are here in Alberta. Uh, Sean Moore currently in the ring right now. Known as the Matt Messiah. If you guys want an opportunity to see a lot of what Michael Richard Clark has done as, and Sean Moore. I do recommend you guys check it out our YouTube page. Uh, with some of our clandestine stuff. Some of the best stuff that they've done. Was during that tournament in 2021. No crowds, no nothing. Crowder! Life is going good tonight. Nobody's been shot at here, so we're all good. Opening match, uh, Takeshita versus Billington. Went off absolutely spectacularly. Now we got Sean Moore and Mike Hall Richard Clark here. As part of a trios team taking all the guns. Well, yeah, I hope everything's going good for you. Hope it's going good for everybody here. But yeah, there's been a lot of... Uh, when it comes to Sean Moore, I think some of his best work I've seen is when he was working with uh, Mo Jabari... Uh, Bo Jabari is the uh, trainee of Bret Hart. And Clark's being made to look crazy here, which sometimes isn't too far out. I love that drop kick.
Lightning getting lit up here. Yes, as an MARC, he is uh, part of a trios here with Sean Moore and London Lightning taking on uh, Colton and Austin Gunn and Juice Robinson. So, And Clark's about to eat the uh, 310 to Yuba. Yeah, we've already seen Tommy Billington. I do believe on this card as well, we're going to see Ava Lawless come up. The uh, second ever top talent wrestling champion. The first as uh, top talent became a promotion. This juice is doing the old leak job on Clark. No push-ups tonight. <laughs> this crowd loves the bag bag gag. Uh oh. I thought Daniel said no to this. Shingo versus Naito next Saturday for the first match of the G1. Let's go. I still don't think this is going to be allowed, but. Well, speaking of which. Wait a second. Wait a second, Full Gear 2021, remember anybody? I think this might actually be a brilliant move in some way here. Plus, hard to be believe Wednesday, it's 250 episodes of Dynamite. Next February, folks, there will be more episodes of Dynamite than there were of Nitro. All right, what does the cockroach got to say here tonight? Yeah, full gear, Daniels, do your research. Exactly. I think it's also, we made this mistake once, we're not going to do it again. They say that, I'm good. Daniels ain't going to be that stupid. Daniels was in a trio as well. SCU, the... You left your house and walked into mine. There we go. Zodiac, thank you for the resub once again. It appears I am still here. Yes, you are. All right, I love this. I'll, I'll get back to your comments here one second. 
And of course, here comes Christian with the famous, no, I'm not doing that. Well, I, I do agree with Christian about the flames, you know. The Flames winning three games is usually an accomplishment for them. I wonder where they're going to... Maybe they do this at uh, Blood and Guts. It's only two weeks away. Sorry, just crack it open a ghost here for tonight. So, this also could be a way for them to get rid of, get rid of that uh, title, or get rid of all the nine titles and just go down to three. Because if you have to forfeit them, then he can come out and just say, these are the official titles. So we got Marco Stud versus Jack Perry on Wednesday. That was pretty fun. You never need nine titles. In one group, why not? But uh, once again, Zodiac, thank you for the resub. I appreciate it. I actually switched up my my alerts from the original to the... Uh, like my first year and then my uh, my first month and all the others. I switched them around, so we're going to get a little Britt Baker here for a while, the resub. So, greatest trio in TNA history, Triple X. I, I could sit with that. Elix Skipper, Low Key, Christopher Daniels. That was absolutely beautiful. Dalton Castle Alert. Absolutely. He's up deck here after the break. Now, WWE's thinking about adding women's US. And I, Jay Quick, don't jump too much about it. There's been a lot of excitement about it, but that picture you saw about those new titles, they are uh, that was AI generated by some reporter, knockoff reporter. You know those kind of reporters that make ringside news look credible? Uh, so I wouldn't put too much stock into it quite yet. And frankly, at this time right now, I would just wait and see until they actually have one. Because cause there's, there's a lot of stories going around everywhere about everything. Sometimes it's just better just to sit and wait. No use trying to jazz things up more than you have to on certain things. So, But yeah, uh, when it comes to... When it comes to these trios titles, I think we're going to have an opportunity to get a few more trios put together. I like the fact that, uh, you know, Malachi Black and Brody King are now sort of looking for a third in a way, but sort of not. It's going to be interesting to see how that all hooks up here and where they end up going. I thought they were going to go with Pac, but now it appears that Pac's got the green light for all in. And it looks like there might be a possibility we get Will, Os Will Osprey versus Pocket at all in the match that I was mentioning six months ago. So. Hey, IDL, IDAL. Good to see you here. Thank you for the compliment on the Street, street Fighter talk. I will admit I was a little bit long winded as we were going through there. But I love talking Street Fighter. I love talking about that movie. I do have it on. Uh, the collection edition uh, DVD and just sit back watching it, tell the story of the whole, whole thing. And there are so many damn good lines in that movie that are just used to this day. Like the whole Wiley e. Coyote segment where you literally change the channel. Oh, here we go. House of Black right in front of our eyes here. The foundation of Webley? I, I, 
feel good for Jeff Jarrett about this. Always one of your favorite guests. Oh, I appreciate that. I, I I try to convince Adam that I'm a little bit more one more one dimensional than just fighting games, but uh, he's got a lot of great guests on there, and I'm happy to listen to him all the time when he's on there. And uh, yeah, whenever he asks, I'm usually all over it. As soon as he asks, I'm usually right there for him. But yeah, uh, if you haven't listened to it yet, check out Member of the Game and uh, in this week's edition, as we were talking about Street Fighter, the bo- Street Fighter, the game, Street Fighter, the movie. I ended up talking about The Legend of Chun Li. I ended up talking about Street Fighter, the movie, the game. We we were all over the place with stuff. Would love to be on his show one day. No, that isn't how he does things. You know what? I I just basically fumbled into it because everybody knew me as the fighting game guy. Even though personally on stream, I haven't played fighting games in a month. I really want to get into it again, but just time. That's all it is. Just time. Like, for example, uh, for those that... uh, haven't been following me on the uh, old X or shitter as uh, Zodiac wants me to call it. I'll give it to him once tonight. I dubbed this now officially grind week as for the next seven days as we are uh, grinding up to some big things coming up. Uh, for example, tonight we're going to be doing week three of... Uh, WWE 2K24 Wednesday will be week four. So the pay-per-view is going to be, or the PLE will be next Saturday following, uh, following collision. So the Outrunners are the official boys of, uh, Dalton here tonight. Dalton's great. Well, that camera needs a cleaning. Yeah, you notice those guys didn't uh, go on their back or go down so they walk on their back. Funny, forget the garb. We already know who they are. They are the Outrunners. Yeah, like, it almost fits the gimmick even better in some ways. And for what, for what I hear, this is actually a pretty big upgrade for the, for uh, ROH. From what I heard, the boys were rather unprofessional of this. So so the winner of this actually gets Mark Briscoe in just over a week and a half. <laughs> I love Shivani. Watch the kingdom come up to the come up top there, so to do to deal with commentary right away that would be hilarious but no the, the one thing i would just say that if you're interested just ask i know he's got a lineup of people but he's also cognizant that everybody has schedules for stuff but yeah i don't i don't push myself i, I really it's one of my biggest faults. I don't get out there and push myself more like I used to. 
back when I was in wrestling, I was trying to work everybody everywhere possible here. I actually had the privilege of pre-pandemic working for every single promotion in Alberta. Every single wrestling promotion in Alberta. At least once. Which, ironically enough, I finished the trifecta or the hexafep. I think it was six. I think it was six or seven. I managed to do Sal for PWA, the show before the pandemic, so... I was actually pretty proud of the fact that I got through everybody here, so. But yeah, the big announcement locally here in the last few days. Uh, Top Town Pro Wrestling, which I pretty much consider 1A one, one or 1B of uh, Alberta Wrestling right now. Just announced today that they're bringing DiJack in for their show uh, August 9th. So... They usually have a pretty big fancy roster as they come in. I know they got Effie for that show. Dijak's another one. I I don't have the complete card in front of me, but. The flexing is supposed to fire up Dalton. Okay. Dalton getting his jog in. Oh, nope, nope. We're not going to go that way. Dalton just fired up here. But yeah, I can't. I think it's Queen Aminata that Athena is going to be facing at uh, Death Before Dishonor. But right now she's playing up the uh, Cowboy Bob Orton gimmick where her leg is always broken. At least Athena's tried to do that. Let's put it that way. Castle so proud of himself tonight. But yeah, it, it's nice to see these cards being put together rather quickly here. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see who they get for their TV TV title match now that the title's down in uh, EO Mexico at CMLL. Kyle Fletcher losing the title a week ago Friday. Uh-oh, here we go. And all the distraction, Roderick just said to hell with all of you, and let's go for it. Heard CML is pissed about Vacker. Do you blame him, really? CMLL's pissed. NJPW's pissed. I would say AEW is more disappointed than pissed. They're not really. They're not really angry. They're just disappointed that they didn't get a chance to sign her, which. Understandable. CMLL and New Japan, well, basically, she just threw her titles at the company and said, walk away. CMLL need to write better contracts? Yes and no, Zodiac. That's the problem here. And I'll, I'll try to break it down in a way that uh, it relates to everybody here. Say you're doing a job and, uh, for example, minimum wage here in Alberta is $15 an hour. So you're working a $50 an hour job and the next guy's coming in or offering you, if you can start on Monday, we will give you 20 bucks an hour. If not, we're going to have to find somebody else, but we need you to start Monday no matter what. Are you going to give the courtesy of giving two weeks? You'd like to. I'm sure it'd be great for the resume, but... If they're going to be offering me a, a substantial raise, they're going to... No, I, here's your stuff. I got to go. Sorry. And even if they did have a contract, what? She can't work in Mexico anymore? Like, I, I get it. A North America contract, but that bridge would be crispy AF. Yeah, like... 
I, I think CML is more pissed that they were targeted by WWE that way. I think more for the fact that this is more of a revenge play in their mind because they're associated with AEW, while AAA has more of an association with WWE right now. And actually, uh, Vacker is making her debut today in WWE and uh, in a show in Monterey, Mexico, I do believe, is where she is right now. So, And, and RK, you're nailing it right on the head. CML doesn't even pay the women, apparently. That's why I was trying to use the example I did. Like, if you're getting paid minimum here at this company and then another company turns around and say, I'm going to pay you a lot more, but you have to go now. With, with, with all due respect, you and uh, here's here's all my equipment. Goodbye. I wouldn't stick around if I'm not getting paid what I feel I should make. It, it does make it hard if you don't make out in that spot where you're at. But unfortunately, there's some wrestlers that just will not have to worry about that problem. Like you tell me, Stephanie doesn't work out in uh, in WWE or in NXT for that matter. She just doesn't get the culture shift or whatever. You're telling me that AEW or New Japan wouldn't just come. New Japan, maybe not as willingly, but you think Tony Khan won't just unload the uh, the Brinks truck buyer and say, come join us? And let me correct myself. It's not going to be the uh, Brinks truck. It's going to be the uh, the Brinks bike. AEW is super up. But the fact that she doesn't have WWE as an option will take money out of her, money out of her pocket. Because CML won't be as willing to take her back. Even though they are carnies, they'll try and make some money out of it. Oh, uh, just a quick note for you guys, uh, as it flashed up on the screen there, I know it's two months away, but, uh, unfortunately I won't be here for the AW collision, uh, September 6th. That's because SmackDown's here in Edmonton. So I'm going to go check out SmackDown for the night and then we'll be here the next night on the 7th for, uh, all out from Chicago. So. I still got to book a guest for that. Jesus Christ, man, I'm so far behind. And I've decided I'm not going to go with a guest for wet, for uh, Blood and Guts it right now unless somebody steps up and says they want to do it. You can watch me get grossed up by myself for that. By the way, if any of you ever want to just stop in and you know hang out, but... Of course, that's why it's called betting on yourself. A lack of success is a huge risk. Absolutely. The only thing is, when it comes to WWE, if they're looking for you, odds are you're gonna, you're not gonna have much of a problem with that. When you're dealing with, you know, maybe an MLW or even a TNA in some respects, then you maybe it's a little bit more of a calculated risk. But if WWE's gonna sign you, yes, there isn't a guaranteed contract, but. The fact that they're out there searching for you basically says a little bit more about the uh, chance of success that you're going to get here. Oh, we're going to get a fight here. Maybe they're trying to set up the Outriders versus the Undisputed Kingdom for the tag titles at the pay-per-view. They got to do something, so. Like, I have... Have you guys heard much about the card that's going to be going on? I know that there's uh, Queen Aminata, Athena, the winner of this is going to be taking on uh, Mark Briscoe. Which I'd assume it's going to be Roddy, but. Oh, God. Here it is. Little sit down reversal there. I like that. Oh, 
Oh, the arm again. Then the knee right to the arm. That'll be it. It's not the castle's out. I think he hurt his arm. Seriously. Funny how that graphic was made up that quick. So yeah, now the fact that we might be setting the uh, the undisputed kingdom down to ROH on a more permanent basis. You got to imagine, think about this too. We got Blood and Guts coming up on the 24th and he's got to defend the AEW title against Roderick Strong or the ROH title against Roderick Strong two days later. I think this promo was supposed to go on Wednesday. See that salt with the wisdom? All right. I'll, I'll, I'll give him that for the promo. It didn't turn out half bad. Not his motivational style, but you know, Kyle wasn't there to uh, absorb it all, so it'll be interesting to see how Kyle's but or Mark Briscoe's buddies, Kyle O'Reilly and Orange Cassidy, end up working up against a team like uh, the Undisputed Kingdom here. And I hope for the Kingdom's sake that they actually win. But yeah, still coming up on the card tonight. We're gonna get Nyla Rose in action. Uh, we're gonna get. Uh, Sky Blue versus uh, Harley Cameron. Our main event once again. And I think... Oh, we got still got the... Uh, what? Oh, uh, Team uh, Top Flight versus... Uh, uh, Shane Taylor Promotion. Sorry, I had a little bit of a brain fart there for a second. It's been a long day. Maybe I need to chug some of this ghost here. Once again, thank you everybody for uh, sticking around here. I usually don't resort to ghosts for streams, but I thought it was a little bit of a high test kind of night, you know. Um, yeah, and uh, just a quick quick note i'll just throw it out real quick uh tomorrow night i should be up about 9 p.m eastern uh might go a little earlier if i get home from work earlier uh we're gonna grind a little bit on mlb the show it is all-star weekend they're giving us some extra let me some ghost best energy drink in stores honestly if i gotta pick up a can stuff i i, I would agree i like the fact that you know using the elgato green screen it really shows off like this. Uh, I personally picked the sour watermelon. But uh, the GG subs for me actually works really good here during stream. It's a little less, less potent. But uh, definitely has the same kick I got. So The cat a ghost turned into a ghost. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I, I really do like how that turned out. But the funny thing is, the black also does that as well. But um, 
Yeah, in terms of Athena winning, I think that's the case. I honestly thought it was going to be Billy Starks that took the title off Athena. Whether I, I thought it was going to be the first time around, but maybe the second. But uh, no, I think it. I think it's time for Amanada to get. Oh, this gentleman here is. His name's going to be Hologram. We'll show the full promo here. He was formerly known in uh, AAA as Aramis. When I first saw it, I guess that was an AI generated guy in the first part of it. Maybe an AI Ricky Starks. God bless Chris Statlander. Okay. It's Saturday night. Da -da -da. So once again, we got Nyla Rose coming out. She's going to be taking on uh, the second ever top talent wrestling women's cha or champion. They don't do uh, separate women's and men's titles. I want a Nana versus Stokely match. Hey, that would sell some tickets. I remember her first match in uh it was uh the clandestine society uh clusterfuck rumble that they had and she just they gave her one job hit some germans she hit a lot of germans but the growth that she's had and the development she's had just ava is one of the best women here in alberta period Like I have to say, on the top talent side, you got Ava Lawless on the uh, on the Love Wrestling side. You got Zoe Sager. You got Taryn from Accounting. Jesus, Nyla just said thank you. Good night. <laughs> that was rough. All right. Nyla not even followed her out. Nyla was like, nope. <laughs> this shouldn't take long. Yep, yeah, that's it. Nyla, when she gets out there, she gets over. Except everybody's booing her because she beat, beat uh, Ava, right? 
It's no different than when uh, Jericho and uh, Big Bill took on Mo Jabari and Harlan Abbott here in Edmonton on Dynamite. That crowd was all over Harlan. Surprised he hasn't got more of a shot in AEW with after that kind of response, but say la vie. Wonder if that Harley Cameron match. Harley Cameron has developed so much here. And we were talking about this a few weeks ago. The uh, top five people to benefit from uh, from the post CM Punk dynasty in AEW. And I honestly feel Harley Cameron's one of those people. Like I have to say, Gates of Agony, Bride Cage, Harley Cameron, then just the morale of the damn roster. Sky Blue just seems that she misses Julia Hartwell. I think in a way there's a lot of it has to do with focus and a lot of it she did get spooked in that ROH match in Edmonton where I, I get sticks and stones, but the uh, some of the stuff that was being curled out apparently was even beyond that. So with, with all decent respect, just she might need some guidance. She just, I don't know what, I don't know what it is really. But the one thing I would like to say about the more than anything, I know people complain about the one match per night on dynamite for the women. You cannot say that about collision. Oh, so it is just the two of them. Okay, it's two on two. This should be fun. Mr. Water Bottle Chug himself. I love when Dante comes in the ring and he almost looks like he's going to skip, fall off there because he doesn't know what's going on. Like, He's like lost. Collision is the multiple women match show. Even Rampage sometimes is what. Yeah, like anybody that says that there isn't a focus on women's wrestling at AEW, it's just straight up wrong. Is it on Dynamite every week? No, I'll, I'll, I'll be admit they have a one match and that's it. Or I think this, what is it? They had two segments this week. One was a sh one was a match. One was a segment. But more often than not, they just have the one match. But here they got three. Last night, shout out to my girl, Rachel. The one woman wrecking crew. Making her debut on TV for the first time in eight years. As she took on Thunder Rosa, they got viciously attacked by Diada Perrazzo. I still got to watch the whole match. I haven't had a chance to see it yet. Oh yeah, Shane Taylor, he well he's taking a night off tonight, which I'm happy about. We're probably gonna get a trios match by the end of this again, but it's been forever since we see the go go in the rig. You bought for the two one six. Jay Quick, did you get a chance to uh Did you get a chance to check out the uh, AEW Unrestricted feature say Taylor? I, I found it real. I, I've had a lot of fun to listen to. And just a lot of common sense, too, when it comes to it. You don't know whether he's Fabian or whether he's t just called the truth. But either way, you know, it, it makes a lot of sense. I was surprised when one week TNA had three women's matches. That isn't normal. Um... They try to focus on their women's division as much as they can. And I think everybody's trying to do that right now with... With NXT loading up the way they are right now, because... 
we're probably a month away from having uh, Steffi Vacker, of course, Julia, who just uh, finished uh, a match against Sarif in Marigold for the uh, inaugural uh, Marigold Championship. That apparently there's a wrestler Delta out of uh, out of uh, Australia that's doing a very good job there as well, and apparently she's supposed to be signed. Even though Delta's come out straight and said, "Oh, I guess you guys know built more than I do." Usually, that's a phrase used to uh, sort of acquiesce the fact that you try to set up a smoke screen about what was going on before. I mean, look at even New Japan as a women's division. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, they're doing Monterey tonight, Mexico City tomorrow, I do believe. And yeah, Stephanie's being featured in both of those. She'll probably end up getting a five-minute match. Hello, I'm here. Yes, I'll squash this person as I am your hero. And then I will go report to NXT. Which, I know a lot of people are asking, why don't you put him on the main roster? And I think for the most part, it's a case-by-case basis, but more often than not, it's not about the uh, in-ring stuff. Like, let's face it, everybody in WWE could go in the ring. Everybody that's in AEW could go in the ring, despite what people say about certain people. Anybody that's on TV right now has the ability to go. The biggest thing with people like uh, Julia, like Stephanie Vacker, and even Delta, they come, come over. It's the cultural appropriation into the North American climate. Because it's different compared to anywhere else in the world. Hell, let's face it. Presidential candidate almost got shot today. Which I'm still wondering if I figure out if he's a Republican or Democrat, the guy that sh- took the shot. But I don't think that matters at this point. As I drop the politics and go silent for a minute. Jesus. Even though there was no heat on Stephanie, I get... Guess what see about? Yeah, Jay Quick, there, there is there, right? It doesn't matter who shot him, really. A, a nut job? Yeah, exactly. I don't condone shooting anybody. Trust me, it's Lord. Lord knows I've been attacked with knives before as a referee. So I, I, I think it's a complete idiotic to deal with stuff like that. But but yeah, like the other thing is, uh, Jay Quick, you're talking about that heat with uh, Stephanie. There's going to be such a buffer with uh, WWE walking in there. Basically, WWE could do whatever they want, wherever they want. They could stomp in and say, we are wrestling, and nobody's going to be able to say tickety-boo. I think the only exception you could say about that is Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, and you, you heard about what happened there. The fact that half our roster almost didn't make it back to the States after a show. Because their planes were delayed. Funny how they got the same mechanical problem on every vehicle, on every plane. But I digress at that point. But now it, it's let's just say it's going to be a very hectic summer overall. And I don't even mean by the weather either. It's not going to be just hot for that. People's tempers are going to be at an all-time high right now. And let's face it, what happened today is not going to exactly cool things down at all. So, Because each side's going to blame the other for what happened there. And next thing you know, we got the Hatfields and the Coys down in the States, which I don't envy you guys, but I live in Alberta right now, and we're sort of... 
we're sort of a little lower down in the degree, but we we got our old problems up here too. I live in the province where we have the uh, premier who is exactly, well, essentially the Trump of Canada and everybody else wants the other, well, doesn't necessarily want the other guy, but compared to what they're getting, Our, our things run a little different up here. I guess that's the best way to put it. But you guys aren't here for politics. You're here for wrestling. And, and realistically, this could affect wrestling quite a bit here right now. If Depending on what people want in terms of movement. I honestly feel, depending on how, which way things go, there might be a, you know, a shutdown at the border. There could be the potential of, you know, you look at a guy like Jacob Fatu, you look at a guy like uh, the Usos, you look at a guy like Jeff Hardy. I was trying to think of people with criminal record at AEW, but most of them are gone now. Cash has been cleared. Jeff's gone. This crowd try to fight top flight up here. Either that guy win, whether it's Roddy or Castle, it'll be a good match for Brit. Well, now that Roddy's won, that is going to be a very good match. And I do feel that Roddy should win the title. Re Realistically, I think AEW would be more advantageous to have Briscoe on the on the AEW roster versus the ROH roster. And I feel that having Strong as your head champion in uh, in ROH will bring a lot of credibility there too because he is a former ROH champion as well. And it might be the opportunity where they actually have the ROH champion a little bit more on ROH TV. That's really all I ask right now. If you're going to be a champion, please be a champion in the branch that you're supposed to be. It's also risky for Briscoe because RH pay-per-view is... That's what we were talking about earlier. The fact that Blood Guts is two days before the title defense. I'll be very surprised if a go-go doesn't win this with knockout punch. Because a go-go should be the guy to... Re realistically, a go-go should be the guy to, sh to throw the punch right in the face of... Uh... If they, sorry, if they want to if they want to upvote anybody or they want to promote anybody, I think a go go is the right guy to do that too. There it is. That right end didn't look great, but. Darius gonna eat a punch right away. Oh god. That sucks. So if we believe that Cardi and Tony Cotta, the media deal is almost done. Would you announce it at Wembley? I would. I sure as hell would announce it at Wembley. You got fifty thousand people. Right now they're probably realistically looking at maybe fifty five thousand, sixty thousand. You're not going to get the 80 again. There's just people that just will not come out after the first one, right? And I honestly feel that having Danielson versus uh, Strickland, while it's going to be an insane great match, I don't think that's the match that sells tickets for him. I think the match that they should have done was Hangman Swerve. It's just...
Oh, here comes Shade Taylor to screw things up. Andretti taking Taylor out, out of boy. Oh, if that was Joe, that would have been a hook up. That would have been a, a choke out. Okay, I see you. Wow. That was a, well, that's pretty much a F5 DDT. And Shane Taylor's had enough. And the first pay-per-view I would air live on Max will be all out. I don't think you do that. I, I think what you do is you find a way to get a double package, similar to what they did earlier in the year with, uh, with the big three, with uh, Stig's Retirement and Revolution, along with Double or Nothing and Forbidden Door. They put them together for 100 bucks. I think you find something to do that for All In and All Out, where you get a package deal for uh, pay-per-views for that. The fact they're within two weeks of each other, it just makes sense to do that. It's funny, Statlander and uh, Stokely said their fight was going to go off forever. It almost looks like this fight between Top Flight and uh, Shane Taylor Promotions is going to last forever as well. Your opinion, do you think a deal is close to being done? Yeah, I think it is. That's a th but here's the thing and I've dealt with like if you guys didn't know I don't bring it up a whole lot just because the uh, statute of limitations just ran out on it but oh Feels been going on too long. I think so. It's in cool down already. Hey, Vic, how you doing tonight? It's been a hell of a great night here from Calgary. Okay. All right. So let me get a quick recap in here for Vic and uh, HPC. HPC bad guys. Always great. To, always a great show every Thursday. Um, what happened tonight? We had a great match between Tommy Billington and uh, Takeshita. Uh, Takeshita gets the win with the the uh, knee after uh, Ole Gaga 2 cow with a blue thunderbomb. 
Don Callis tried to recruit him to the family. Uh, unfortunately, hit Fletcher came out to uh, help uh, beat up uh, Billington after when Ka when uh, Billington told Callis to kiss his ass. Uh, the Bag Bag Gag took out uh, London Lightning and two local competitors, uh, Sean Moore and Michael Al Richard Clark. Uh, following the match, uh, they announced that Jay White was injured due to uh, the actions of Christian Cage in that uh, match against uh, Hangman Page the week before. So they were going to try to give... Uh, Juice the trio title. Unfortunately, Christopher Daniels came out, stripped the bag bag gag of the titles, gave it to, uh, or sorry, Christian comes out, demands that they get the titles automatically. And uh, Daniels pretty much said, you two can fight it out to see who the real champions are. Uh, Nyla Rose defeated uh, local competitor uh, Ava Lawless. Uh, Roderick Strong defeated Dalton Castle to qualify to beat, uh, or to face, sorry, Mark Briscoe at Death Before Dishonor coming up on the 26th. And, yeah, I think you're pretty much caught up for the most part here. We had, uh... Oh, yes, uh, sorry. Uh, Fletcher was beating down... Fletcher and Takeshita were beating down uh, Tommy Billington with Don Callis' help. And FTR returned in Calgary. Of course they're going to return to Calgary. It's Brett's home. If you guys didn't know, uh, uh, Dax's wife and uh, Cash ended up uh, bringing out uh, Bret Hart for Dax's 40th. So. And yes, Cash got rid... Cash spent some cash... Picked up a razor, and now he is clean shaven completely. But not cleared yet, just pull it up. I gotta feel that's the case. They didn't, there was no interview time, they didn't say anything. Uh, next week, we're getting the debut of Hologram. Wait, are we getting now the Rose of Mercedes Monet? Wow, what a promo. I love it. I love it. At least Nyla is the first challenger this time for a belt. Yeah, that's true. Sky was the first one. Hey, JBJ, how you doing there tonight? Mercedes, everybody's after you. Yeah. Should have made the match in Oklahoma. I think Arkansas has the same rules, Zodiac. I think that might be a bit of a... I'm just mystified with... Uh, oh. For real, I'm shocked that Isla came back with all that. Hey, she ended up beating up uh, Ava Lawless, which is always a good boost here. The uh, second ever uh, top talent wrestling champion. But uh, JPJ, how, how's life treating you? How, didn't get a chance to check out the, the league yesterday. I was unfortunately at work. So Wednesday, it's not like Mercedes... Uh, we get Nyla Mercedes on Wednesday. We get Osprey MJF to open Wednesday. And our main event is Swerve at Okada on Wednesday. You tell me 250 ain't jacked. Sorry, just had a Harley Cameron moment. My, my apologies. Uh, 
cameraman, cameraman, cameraman. Hi, Nigel. Yeah. I, I think Nigel's been told to call it back a little bit. A little. Woo. <laughs> By the way, uh, if you haven't heard, and I'm sort of glad that we took down the, uh, we didn't get to the sub goal I wanted for ordering a case of that uh, Woo Energy, but apparently the uh, deal with AEW and Woo Energy is done. I love the fact that Brandon Thirst is bringing up that it was a multi-year deal. Uh, forgetting that multi-year could be 2023, 2024, which could be a nine month deal. I'm assuming that there were certain thresholds that needed to be made to uh, to keep that contract going. So, Chad, I have to ask you, Vic, Vic, I know that you might be interested in this question. I might actually bring it up uh, after we're... Like, I want to start doing a few more wrestling videos, too. And I, I was going to comment... To, we were talking about this earlier tonight. Can you think of the people that have benefited the most from the CM Punk uh, removal from AEW? And we were talking about it earlier. I consider Harley Cameron to be one of those. Maybe it's just a coincidence, but the fact she's been getting more TV time here, like, I know there was one stretch there where she was doing dynamites every Wednesday. I think it was leading up to double or nothing. Jesus. That cheeky Nando's could be more than one's there. But I'm with you guys. It, it seems a little weird about uh, Sky and just where she's at right now. Because without Julia Hart, she really doesn't have. She doesn't have much going on, really. Like in terms of a storyline, in terms of things uh, coming together here. And I, I hope that they do find something for her. But they, here's the thing. When it comes to Sky Blue, she's actually getting TV time. That's a th that's more important than anything else. They don't have any real direction for her, but she's one of those that's just out there having good matches consistently. And if you could go out there and have good matches consistently, just setting up in the middle of the card, they will find something for you eventually here. Now... I've heard grumblings that Julie Hart might not even come back, but I, I, I think that's, I think there's a lot of fear mongering going on. And um, I understand the, the terms, uh, no sh Sherlock would come into effect here. Cause let's face it up until tonight, wrestling Twitter was one of the biggest dumpster fires in the world. I, I think that can be replaced here at least for a few days based on the stuff that's gone down today. We'll, we'll, we'll see what happens as things uh, mellow out and settle down here, but. Yeah, I want to. But getting back to the topic there, I, wa I want to see maybe we can come up with a list of the people who benefited the most in the post-CM Punk era. And once again, Brian Cage, Gates of Agony, Harley Cameron. I'd almost say swerve, but I think they were already lighting him up there. Because I think anybody that the heavyweight title seat, it's been, it's been pretty much booked out already. I, I would say Jack Perry, but that'd be a bit of a low-hanging fruit, really. Because while... While I do feel that Jack Perry has gotten exponentially better for what he was there was so much runway to work with there like 
we were talking about it, but prior to like while he was having that feud, with, if you guys remember, he he was having a feud with Hook as everything wrapped up here. We were talking about how he really didn't have anything in terms of our personality. And realistically, Jack right now, while he does have an open mouth and he does like the app a lot, and the story that he di- that he did get shafted by everybody else as we are going along here, it it upsets me to a little bit that it ended up uh i just don't see the extra impact that he thinks he's getting on this yes he's getting elevated and i i hope that the push works out for him but i don't think it's hit yet to be honest he's got the tnt championship fine what does he do with it Oh God. Just got to repost this, uh, Rachel dressing herself up as a lumberjack or Photoshopping herself as a lumberjack. Uh, sorry. Harley's doing everything to try and win this match, and she's just not getting it. But FTR just don't see the same since Punk left. I think they realize what the landscape of AEW is, and it is very different from what they probably thought it was going to be. Once again, just the two count. <laughs> and, and the fact that also now that Adam Copeland's out for a year, if he comes back, because realistically he should be out for pretty much most of most of twenty twenty. Four, if not a good part of 2025. Oh God, that's super kick. So what's she doing now? That's an interesting guillotine there. A trapped our guillotine. Maybe it's me, but Soraya Stock. See, I don't think Soraya Stock was ever there to begin with, to be honest. She was there to get that pop at Wembley, and it just... Ever since they gave her the title at Wembley, and then she lost it subsequently, just... Weeks later, I think everybody sort of uh, lost the bloom on the rose. No pun intended there. I I think that might have been like one of the biggest, one of the big biggest misses. Like hell, you could have had Tony Storm win the title there. Would have been just as loud. Oh, God. Why? What the hell is that? I got Jericho on my screen. But I think she thinks she's better than she is. She was better. She was better than she is now. That's the thing. And it's sort of ironic that we're looking at Jericho at the same time here, because sometimes the best thing to realize is you're not as good as you were. And if you do start learning that sooner, the better you can adapt. Ah, good old Shockmaster here. (laughs) 
So apparently every time Jericho says hi guys, it's getting a lot more creepier and a lot more nastier, so Serena seems like she's better to, she's better as a manager, really. And the fact that she's got her brother there to work with right now and setting all that up. The learning tree just wanted to make him the shockmaster. It was advice. Hi hey guys. What the hell was that? I will still leave that up there for you guys. Um, all right, as tradition, we are getting up to our main event here coming up. Uh, give you a quick rundown of what's coming up here on the stream. After we're done here, I'm going to take about a five minute break here, get everything set up, unload, reload, load up the Xbox. And we're going to get into week three of uh, my GM mode here on uh, WWE 2K24. Tomorrow night, I will be here probably around 9 Eastern, maybe a little sooner with a little MLB The Show 24. It is uh, double XP week as well as uh, uh, dr free drops for you guys. So free cards to pick up or free packs to pick up. Sorry. At this point, I'm looking no stream Monday. I got a couple things to fix up as well as uh, I think we all want to see what mommy's got to say to Dom. Uh, Tuesday, we'll be here grinding a little bit of uh, Tears of the Kingdom. My goal is to have Tears of the Kingdom done in July here. So essentially, Tuesday and Thursday are going to be Tears of the Kingdom streams as we grind the log. And then next Thursday will be our opportunity to take apart Ganondorf. So I hope to start early and I plan on sticking on until we actually get rid of the suckers. So uh, we'll see how things go there. Wednesday, we'll be back here with uh, AEW 250, as well as week four of uh, WWE My 2K My GM. Friday, as long as everything goes well, I will be here with uh, the new Nintendo World Championships. You guys can see how horrible I am at speedrunning. And then uh, Saturday, we'll be back here with uh, AW Collision, followed by the Backlash PLE for 2K24. It won't be pretty with what Mommy says. No, no, it will always be pretty, whatever Mommy says. But, uh, yeah, no. Uh, once again, everybody, thank you guys for uh, guys and girls hanging out for me the, with me here. Got a lot of great things going on here. and Collision on the same night as Slabiversary, yeah. Oh. Bitches! Ooh! Sheeta versus Blue, let's go. Let's go. Uh, as Orange Cassie's coming out here, uh, Jay Quick asking, so do you think Tony Kata's buyers are worse with Sarad? No. I don't think so. Or If he had buyers or more so much, he wouldn't even have her on TV right now. Because, frankly, he used her for what he needed her for. He's using her in a decent role right now. If it was an overpaid contract, maybe. But we'll never know the financials. We're not supposed to. It's like everybody was talking about Mercedes Bonet's contract. About how it's supposed to be the biggest women's wrestling. Nobody knows what the number is. And guess what? TK don't have to say shh. Shh. About about what uh, that contract is. Because they're a privately traded company, so they don't need to say anything to anyone about anything. WWE is publicly traded, so all that stuff is accessible. And also, where else would she go? If, she, if it doesn't work out, it's not like they will, 
it will cost the time to keep her around. Exactly. Like, Plus, she's probably valuable in the back. Yes and no. She's had some, like, they. I love when everybody says that everybody has an attitude problem or has attitude issues of stuff and whatnot. I, yeah, I, I don't see it in many ways. I, I don't believe it until I actually see it. And, and of course, you know, the only time I think we've actually seen it in, in full is what happened with Pug because he brought it out to the forefront, right? It, it's where, in 2024, where Kayfabe tries to stay in put. This is going to be a lot of fun to watch here. Wonder what Soraya's cryptic tweet that she posted a while back was about. Was it about Zach, maybe? I don't know. I didn't see what it said. Give me one sec. I'll take a quick look here. As I go through all the spam that got sent to me here. Punk is better at WWE, and I didn't think... I think he didn't look at AEW as a legit organization, though he was bigger than, than it all. And thought he was bigger than it all. Absolutely. It was something like, I'm a, oh. Everybody will complain. Well, the other thing is, her boyfriend has... Uh, is not exactly the most politically correct person in the world right now. I don't know the exact, so I can't explain more, but I do know the big spiel is the fact that her significant other is basically a complete freaking moron in some cases, but. But yeah, Zodiac, to your point about punk, I think he was using it as a stepping stone, but he also thought it was a company that he could run. He thought he could do Shawn Michaels' role at AEW. He thought that Tony Khan was going to be looking for somebody the way that uh, WCW ended up looking for Eric Bischoff, one of the guys that's involved in the product and how he could book it to make it better. When it ended up being TK in charge of everything... Plus, she sounds a little douchey when I'm watching her streams. In the <sighs> Here's the other part about that you got to be careful about. There have been... Uh, everybody's had their own vices at certain times of life. And this is why I really try not to judge many people anymore. I used to. I used to be a hardcore judger, and I'd already had my opinions about everything going on. But... Everybody has their own vices and things going on, right? Like, it's it's no doubt that she bit on the uh, the the interesting chemicals. I think is the best way to put it. I'd say wacky tobacco, but that'd be conservative. Because I think she was on a lot of other stuff besides that. But. Uh, I just sum it I just sum it up uh, just the way I'll give you a personal experience yesterday. I actually had a couple fighting outside my apartment. And they were yelling at each other the fact that the whole complex could hear. And if you guys know me, I'm always a way to step in and deal with stuff, right? So I just turn around like, look, work it out, calm it down. We don't need to hear about it. And the guy said, shut up. It's none of your business. I'm like, you're yelling all the way over here is making me my business. 
just that five or ten seconds where the fight could get deflected over to me and he could swear and curse at me, which, hell, I'm so used to that. It's not even scary these days. But it's funny, five minutes later, I didn't even know he had a gun or anything, but he comes parked out. He comes to my door, knocks on my door, and just uh, apologizes. And My theory on apologizing, and it, I, I know we're getting a little off topic for the wrestling here, but it's a, it's a very important lesson in life. You'll never, ever need to apologize to me about anything, ever. If you change the behavior reflective to what was the problem as far as i'm concerned that's more an apology than anything else if you're gonna apologize to me and just come up with the s sos same old then you're not then your apology means nothing i'm a man of action not a man of words which for many people when they watch me on these streams they understand why i'm a man of action and not words O'Reilly just cleaned house here. Roddy looks like some sort of, you know, Drage changed. Oh, it was just read Dirty Funk Jr. is doing a tag match in Japan. He's 83. I just told my dad who who's about the same eyes. He just scratched his eyes together and said, you're kidding? Well, I will say this, if Dory Funk actually ends up getting involved in a match, especially in Japan, I don't think we're going to see... I think it's going to be very short, and I don't think there's going to be a lot to it. Depending on the promotion that he's working with, a lot of those promotions in Japan know how to work smoke and mirrors very well. Like, if you're going to do an 83-year-old Dory Funk Jr. who can't do it, uh, I would stick him in, like, a 10-man tag and he could get involved for a little bit and then just disappear. O'Reilly, Miss, Miss Briscoe, he needs some words. Yeah, he needs some motivation. And I believe they call themselves the conglomerate now. The, the trio is an official term. As soon as I heard that they had an official term for the three of them, you sort of know that uh, Briscoe's probably losing the title to Roddy at the pay-per-view, right? It, it just makes sense so that the conglomerate can work together and then, hell, you can put David and uh, David Bennett and uh, Strong on the ROH tapings a little more consistently. Dory Funk Jr. is likely going to do... Is it likely to do minimum Dory the Funks? Fair enough, but I, I think for the fact that if you put multiple people into the match, even if he tries to do more, it sort of masks what he's trying to do. Because if anything goes sideways, you can put more people in there just to, you know... You'll see a certain something, but it'd be covered up by somebody else doing something great, right? Sorry, just getting soccer highlights at the same time here. Holy crap! Breaking news here on the channel, folks. Stephanie Vacker has been replaced. As CML Women's World Champion by AEW Superstar Willow Nightingale. She won the three-way tonight to win the uh, the CML Women's Championship. So, here, here's the funny part, chat, and I know that 
it's been a war back and forth. I, I really don't buy the either way. Like, as long as you provide me a good show. WWE show Vacker walking into the arena. Rex, that doesn't surprise me either. CML trying to acknowledge partnerships. Absolutely good for her. Absolutely. Here's the thing, and this is what I was trying to say earlier. If you're looking at the uh, at the partnerships they're having, you're getting WWE sending out, well, who are they sending out here? They got AJ Styles for one Noah match. They got EO Sky and... You got uh, out for Marigold this weekend. But in terms of other than that, like sending to Japan, they're sending like, uh, like David, well, they were going to send David Kemp over there. They're Josh Briggs. You're getting uh, Charlie Dempsey going over to TNA. Which isn't their top end, but they're getting there, but... And w you're getting Hendry sitting over to WWE? Like, they're sitting over their top guys, and you're sitting over... Guys I would consider maybe in the, uh, the second tier. The Rascals, who, are, who weren't being used in, uh... In the tag division at all anymore. Look what AEW's doing. They're putting titles on CML All Stars. The TNT champion is a CML wrestler. Willow Nightingale is a CML women's champion. Moxley took the IWGP title for a good five months and gave it a run here in, in uh Yeah, that's why I just mentioned there, Jay Quick, the Fletcher lost it, lost it on TV in uh, Mexico. The best thing about having someone outside your organization with a belt is they lose it to someone in it. Great way to build a talent, exactly. But the thing is, you could have a bigger talent go down there, and it makes the pride look bigger by winning a title there. And then the person that wins it looks even that much more bigger. That's the thing. Moxley also took a tough loss this weekend. Are you talking about that splash from his daughter? On the counter there? or Because he didn't wrestle this week, so. Because Forbidden Doors a couple weeks ago. And then you also look at like Bloodsport. Like Moxley's out in Bloodsport. WWE sending Shayna Baszler. Oh, he lost the jiu-jitsu match. Ah, that's fine. Nick Nebeth is the AAA champion. Yeah, that's... Well, that's that other branch, right? Because you got uh, AAA, TNA, and WWE sort of working together. Like, TNA understands the value of sending somebody big down there. I'm talking about WWE specifically. I guarantee you the only reason AJ ended up going to Noah is because they actually asked for him. And his history in Japan. What is Roddy doing? It's Mr. Upstairs. Here, here you go. Oh, God. Double distraction here. So Trent's taking out Orange. By the way, Ishii's 
since he's not in the G1, he's like, hell, I'm sticking around for the summer. Oh, Spike Pal Driver, that'll be it. Good way to finish. Unfortunately, we didn't get to see the aftermath of Trent and, uh, and Orange, right? But it seems like this mid card is a lot of feuds that'll just never end, right? I was supposed to win! Well, he didn't. So they want to drag Kyle over and Kyle's like, no, no, no. Mark's going to, Mark's going to leave me the right way here. I have a piece of broken table in my room that Taven signed for Little Villain. I've told this story before on channel, but it, it's been amazing that, uh, that, uh, Matt Taven actually called out one of my mortal enemies here at the time when I was recording video. Because the guy was trying to do live commentary ringside, couldn't even get the name of his f finisher right. Oh, God. Um, folks, I think Orange has snapped. Orange is like absolutely lost it right now. Watch him hit O'Reilly right now. Orange crushed. <laughs> and Ishii just had to finish it off there. Well, we got our new trio to go with the other trio and <laughs> But yeah, it, it it's going to be fun to have Ishii around cuz well, let's face it, he can do uh he can do the collision tapings cuz after next week they're all in Texas, right? Right until all in. So they're going to hang out there for three weeks, four weeks. Hey, Roddy, you said where was Ishii? <laughs> well, you fouled him. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm with you guys about talking about what's going on here coming up uh, on Wednesday here. Like, without hearing about the rest of the card... Right now, we have Swerve Okada as our main event. We got MJF versus Will Ospreay opening the show. We're going to get Nyla Rose and uh, Mercedes Monet. Darby Allen, Jack Perry are supposed to go face to face. I don't know if they're going to have a match. Yeah, like they're not pulling punches. Like AEW is going for broken. It's funny because, like, I I hate guys like Meltzer talking about how they're they're stat padding. Like, uh, for lack of a better term, they're they're piling up all their great matches right now so they can get a better rating. So once they get the contract side, whatnot. Please explain to me something here. How do you get a bad booking out of these shows? Like. Tony Khan has to be a complete freaking moron not to get a get an awesome card set up for for Dynamite for Collision. I know Collision's a little more old school with the uh, lo a lot of feeder matches per se, but Dynamite like everything they're doing on there, everything like it's all a home run. It's all an absolute home run everywhere all over the place. Meltzer, I'm sure the deal is either side or pretty close to being done. 
or it's not even close. He'll throw one of the three in, in a group of four sentences. And that's what everybody will do. It's also known as, I don't know what the hell's going on. And once again tonight, Collision, like, you would have to say in terms of star power, of course Collision is going to be the B show right now. There's no... Like, you know, the guys on Dynamite on on Wednesdays, there, there are home run matches everywhere there. And Collision has their own vibe to it. And Collision almost feels like, all right, you're going to watch Wednesday for the names. You're going to watch Saturday for the wrestling. And I think we definitely saw a lot of great wrestling tonight. And a lot of the circumstances and a lot of reasoning that we're seeing that a lot of feuds are being carried on here. Like, after a little break here, we got uh, Trent and Orange. We're getting, uh, well, Thunder Rosa and Deanna Perrazzo. They're continuing that going on. There are so many feuds that are still continuing right now, and a lot of things being discussed that I, I don't think they really understand what how good this program really is in many ways. And it's just got a shitty time slot. It's no different than uh, than dealing with uh, rent, uh, t or sorry, housing, location, location, location. That's totally what's dealing with right now. If they could get a better time slot for this show, like it, it's funny. I would almost say, like, where else do you put it? Right, and if if you could put Collision, for example. Sunday nights at six or eight, sorry, Eastern. I think you'd have a little bit more success than you would on Sunday or on a Saturday, sorry. Just for the fact people are home already, right? And yeah, Rampage has a terrible time slot too. That's why I think once the new contract gets signed, Dynamite goes to three hours and you might see a day change for Collision. I would love to see Collision change to a Sunday and then literally just disappear for the pay-per-views. The only reason they might not do Collision on a Sunday is because Tony Khan works with the Jags. Tony Khan would have to trust Rampage to somebody outside of his handling, right? That, that would be the only way that would get done. But As I throw the biggest yacht in the world here, just because, you know, asthma sucks. How can you do it remotely? I'm with you on that. One day we're going to have to come up with uh, how does AEW, the best ways to improve AEW um, outside of the norm, like outside of the conventional ones. Top 10 unique ideas to improve AEW. And we'll just throw stuff like that out there. I think that would actually be a lot of fun, to be honest with you, but. Well, that being said, I think we're going to wrap up this half of the show here. Just uh, want to thank everybody for stopping by here. If you're new here, don't go away. We're going to go for a we're going to go for a break here for about I'd say about five minutes as I get the Xbox fired up. I go unload, reload. Don't listen to Belters number one through ten. <laughs> I'll give you that one there. Uh, we're going to go to commercial break, and when we come back, uh, we're going to get into WWE 2K24 Week 3 as we're inching towards the Backlash pay-per-view coming up next Saturday. So, might have to watch AEW and TNA because if I was watching just WWE for wrestling, I might not be watching wrestling at all. Yeah, like, here's the last closing comment I'll have before we go to break here. And... This is a universal moment. Feel free to clip it when it's done if you want. Wrestling as a whole is in a better seed now than I think it's ever been. Whether you're talking about the independent seed, your mid-tier group, or your top promotions. Anywhere across the board, it is at the highest level it's ever been. If you don't enjoy wrestling the way that the way you want it and you can't find a promotion that doesn't suit to your catering of what you think wrestling should be. That's a you thing. 
That's not a wrestling thing. And we could spend three weeks talking about Vince McMahon and the impact that he did, but or getting rid of him did. But personally, I'd rather not even mention his name because, frankly, there's a cross between I don't want to hear that name and also I don't want to get sued because of them owing money because they owe for other lawsuits. But I digress to that point. Thank you.